Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This is my tutorial number nine on TensorFlow. And this is about using video data with a pre-trained inception model using so-called transfer learning. This builds on tutorial number eight, and you should also be familiar with some of the previous tutorials on how to build a neural network in TensorFlow. In the previous tutorial, we used the inception model with the CIFAR 10 dataset. And in this tutorial, we will use the inception model with a new dataset called Knifey Spoony. And this is a dataset that is generated from video recordings, and I will show you how to do that below. So the idea is once again that we take the input images, we feed them through the inception model, we take the transfer values, and we save them to a cache file, and then we build another neural network that takes the transfer values as input and outputs a class number between 0, 1, and 2. And we train this on thousands of images of knives, spoons, and forks. And we want it to be able to classify whether the input image is one of those three classes. So instead of loading the CIFAR 10 dataset, now we import the knifey module, and we can automatically download and extract that from the internet. It's about 22 megabytes, and then we can load it. And what we are loading here is actually just the lists of file names. And we save those lists of file names to disk, so that we can ensure consistency when we reload them again. This is important because they have to match the transfer values that we are saving to other cache files. And all you have to do if you want to use your own data is that you have to execute these lines of code here, and you want to create your own data set instead of using the Knifey Spoony data set. The Knifey Spoony data set was built using these video recordings. For example, we have a recording of Fox here on one kind of background. And here we have on another background. And the idea is then to convert all these videos into single frames that we're going to use as input images in TensorFlow. The videos are placed inside subdirectories with a special structure like this. So for each class of images, we have a subdirectory. And then we place the video recordings inside that directory. And then we have another subdirectory, which is called test. And here we place the video recordings that are going to be used for the test set. And we have one for the Forky class, one for the Knifey class, and one for the Spoony class, like so. And then we have a small script that scans these directories, and it replicates the directory structure, and it converts every video file inside these directories to a series of JPEG images. And the script is called convert.py, and you run it like this. The script takes several arguments. First, we have the input directory, and we set that to my home folder slash video. And we set the output directory to my home folder slash video dash images. And all my video recordings are 1920 by 1080 pixels. So what we do first is that we crop the center of the images. So it's 1080 by 1080 pixels. And then we resize the image to 200 pixels. And we can say that we want to grab five frames per second. And we press enter. And it starts executing. And this will take maybe five minutes or something like that. Maybe 10. I don't know. I'm going to stop this here. I've already done the conversion. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So here we have all the images that were generated from the video recordings. And it continues so on. And you can also see them here. And I have taken video recordings on different backgrounds. Here's another and another and another and another. And the test set uses a background that is not in the training set. So now let's say that you have converted your own video recordings into image files and then you place them in the proper directory and you want to load them. So you just put the directory name here and you run this code here. We will just continue to the, use the Knifey Spoony dataset. So here we have the class names, Forky, Knifey and Spoony. And of course this is taken from a Simpsons joke. And then we have the path names for all the images in the training set. We have the class numbers as integers and we have the classes as one hot encoded arrays or labels. And it's important to note that we don't actually load the images here. We just have a list of file names or path names. So if we just look at the first one, we have home slash Magnus slash development so on down to a JPEG file here. And this is one of the files that we saw just a moment ago. 
So we have a whole list of files like this. And we do the same for the test set. So we get a list of file names for the images. We get the class numbers as integers and as one hot encoded arrays. And once again, we can see that the file path looks something like this. So now we have inside the test folders and we have the test images. And there are a total of 4,170 images in the training set. And there are 530 images in the test set. And these were generated from just a few minutes of video recordings, maybe 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And a lot of this notebook is just like the previous tutorials. So it's helper functions for plotting images and doing various calculations. So I won't go through those. One of the differences is that now we have to load the images because we only have lists of file paths for those images. So we load some images and we plot them and it looks like this. So here we have a fork and a fork and these are actually all forks from the test set. And now we download the inception model from the internet and this is just like the previous tutorials, number seven and eight. And then we load the inception model and now we want to calculate all the transfer values. So what we want to do now is that we want to feed all the images in our knifey spoony data set through the inception model and save all the transfer values to cache file these values here. And it is very similar to the previous tutorial, except that we use the image path names instead of actual image data. And the functions will then load the images behind the scenes and feed them through the inception model and save the transfer values to a cache file. And we do the same for the test set. And then we can check that the shape of the transfer value arrays are correct. There are 4,170 images in the training set and the transfer values are arrays with 2,048 numbers in each. And similarly for the test set where there are 530 images. So let's try and plot some images from the test set and the tra transfer values. So here we have an image of a fork and here we have the transfer values that were output by the inception model. Here we have another image of a spoon and the transfer values from the inception model look like this. And you can compare them to the transfer values for the fork and you can see that they're actually quite different. These are the transfer values from the spoon again and it has really only lighted up strong here with a strong red color here and somewhat here and somewhat here but the rest of it is almost white. So let's analyze the transfer values using principal component analysis and we use it from scikit-learn again. So we reduce the transfer values from arrays with 2048 values to only two values and then we make a scatter plot and it looks like this. So each of these different colors is a different class, knifey, spoony or foggy. And it looks like it's all mixed together. So maybe the inception model couldn't separate the image data or maybe PCA is not the right tool to do the dimensionality reduction. So let's try using TSNI instead. And then it looks like this. So these are all the transfer values from the training set that have had their dimensionality reduced to two. So we can plot it. And this clearly shows clusters or separations of the data. And each of these colors is one of the classes, knifey, spoony or foggy. But it looks like it has been able to separate the classes quite well. And it might actually also be separated into the different backgrounds for the input images. But it looks promising that we might be able to use the transfer values to classify as images of knife spoons and forks. So let us build a new classifier on TensorFlow. So what we want to do now is we want to take the transfer values that we have saved in cache file on disk here, and we want to build a new network which has a fully connected layer and a softmax layer for classifying whether those transfer values are for images that shows forks, knives or spoons. So as usual, we need some placeholder variables. We have X for the transfer values and we have Y true for the one hot encoded arrays with the true class for each of the images. And we construct the neural network using pretty tensor as usual because it's very easy. So we wrap the input tensor and then we add a fully connected layer and a softmax classifier. Then we add the optimization method as usual and we use the ADAM optimizer because it seems to work all right. And now we are ready to perform the optimization on our new neural network that takes the transfer values as input and outputs classes for knife, spoon or fork. So first we have to create a new session and then we have to initialize all the variables of the new neural network. 
And then we have a helper function for generating random batches of training data. And we have another helper function for doing the optimization. And these are exactly the same as in the previous tutorial. And here we have a helper function for plotting some example errors. And this is actually slightly different from the previous tutorials because now we have to load images from the files, but it's well documented so you can read the details if you like. So let's look at the results. The classification accuracy on the test set is about 26% before we do any optimization. This is because our new neural network has only been initialized with random values. So it just makes a random guess whenever it sees an input images. And this is why we have a confusion matrix that looks like this. So if the input image is a spoon, it just places it in a random class. So let's try and perform 1000 optimization iterations. And remember that each iteration uses a training batch of 64 input images. So this uses a total of 64,000 input images but the knifey spoony data set only has about 4,000 images in the training set. So this optimization actually uses every single image in the training set 16 times. This only takes 30 seconds to perform and it results in a classification accuracy of little more than 70%. So we can now correctly classify 373 images out of the 530 images in the test set. And here are some examples of the misclassified images. So here we have an image of a knife classified as a spoon. And here we have an image of a fork that was classified as a knife and so on. Some of these images are easy to see. It's fairly easy to see that this is a fork and you can squint a little and see this is a fork as well. This is a knife and this is a knife. But this one is quite a bit harder and this one is also quite a bit harder. So some of them we really think that those should be classified correctly and others are okay that they are misclassified. Let's look at the confusion matrix again. So what we see is that the spoons have been almost correctly classified. Only a few of them were misclassified and the knife was correctly classified in 99 cases, but in 30 cases it thought it was a spoon and in eight cases it thought it was a fork. But let's look at the fork. Almost all of the fork images are misclassified. It has only correctly classified 35 images, while 39 images were misclassified as knives and 77 images were misclassified as spoons. So this system works very poorly for classifying forks or for recognizing images of forks. It works okay sort of for knives and very well for spoons, but it is absolutely horrible for forks. The reason for that might be that the inception model was trained on the ImageNet data which has more than 14 million images, but it only has 16 images of forks. So out of a huge database of 14 million images, only 16 show forks. So that might explain why neural networks that are trained on the ImageNet dataset cannot really recognize forks. In comparison, the ImageNet dataset has more than 1200 pictures of spoons and it has more than 1300 pictures of table knives. Although some of these are very confusing because they show a lot of other items. This one shows a fork as well as a knife. This one also shows a spoon as well as plates. And this one shows a whole meal with a lot of other things like a cup and a napkin and a lighter and a knife and a fork. So this might explain why we cannot really use the inception model on the knifey spoony dataset because it hasn't been trained to recognize forks. And the images that were used for training the inception model were quite confusing for the knife class as well. So we need to either retrain the whole inception model, which requires a very fast and very expensive computer to work for several weeks. Or we can try and use another technique, which is called fine tuning, where we allow to update the variables of the inception model instead of just using the transfer values from the last layer of the model. In either case, our little script for converting video recordings into thousands of images is actually quite good because we can now easily make very large data sets for training the neural network, whereas a data set such as ImageNet only had a few images of forks. So let me just show you how this conversion script is implemented. It's made in Python 3.5, but I believe it works in Python 2.7 as well. And it requires the avconv program and I have run it on Linux Mint and it implements this function here, video to images, which take all the relevant arguments for the input directory, output directory, crop size, output size, 
frame rate per second and valid extensions for video files. And what the function basically just does is it scans through all the subdirectories recursively, it replicates the directory structure, and whenever it finds a file with a valid file name extension for a video, such as MP4 or MTS, then it executes a shell command for the avconf program that converts the video file to a whole series of JPEG files. And then we just use an argument parser to get all the arguments for the input directory, output directory, and so forth. And then we execute the function above with these arguments. And that's it. And a few minutes ago in this video, I demonstrated how to call it from the terminal window. And here we have the source code for the dataset, and it has a class which scans an input directory for valid image files, and then it builds a training set and a test set. And this needs to be a directory structure like I showed you before. So in this case, it would be knifey spoony slash forky and slash knifey and slash spoony. And then we also have slash test for their test sets. And what it basically just does is it scans those directories and builds lists with those file names. And because we're using this in combination with transfer learning, we need the cache for the transfer values to match the list of file names. So we will usually use this function instead of creating the data set directly from the class because it caches the object to hard disk. So we ensure this consistency between the transfer values and the lists of file names in the data set. And you can click on the link below the video to download all this source code.